Good uh, morning, YouTube. My name is Nubia. I am in recovery. Is it still morning? No, it's afternoon. Good afternoon, YouTube. My name is Nubia. I'm in recovery. I am reading out of the Life Recovery Bible, all the way from Anoka, Minnesota. And we are continuing on 1 Kings chapter 15, Abijam rules in Judah. Okay, and as you can see, we have a special edition episode, fire pit episode, fire pit special edition fire pit, how we want to call it. How do you want to call it? Okay. The bird is distracting me, but that's okay. I'll be able to focus. Chapter 15, Abijam rules in Judah. Abijam began to rule over Judah in the 18th year of Jeroboam's reign in Israel. He reigned in Jerusalem three years. His mother was Maaka, the grandmother of Absalom. He committed the same sin as his father before him, and he was not faithful to the Lord, his God, and his ancestor David. As his ancestor David had been. But for David's sake, the Lord, his God, allowed his descendant to continue ruling, shining like a lamp. And he gave Abijam a son to rule after him in Jerusalem, for David had done what was pleasing to the Lord's sight and had obeyed the Lord's commands throughout his life, except in the affair concerning Uriah the Hittite. There was war between Abijam and Jero Jeroboam throughout Abijam's reign. The rest of the event in Abijam's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. There was constant war between Abijam and Jeroboam. When Abijam died, he was buried in the city of David. Then his son Asa became the next king. Asa rules in Judah. In Judah. 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 Asa rules in Judah. Hmm. Asa began to rule over Judah in the 20th year of Jero Jeroboam's reign in Israel. He reigned in Jerusalem 41 years. His grandmother was Maaka, the granddaughter of Absalom. Asa did what was pleasing in the Lord's sight, as his ancestor David had done. He banished the male and female shrine prostitutes from the land and got rid of all the idols his ancestor had made. He even disposed his grandmother, Maaka, from her position as queen mother because she had made an obscene Asherah pole. Akira, Akira, pole. He cut down her obscene pole and burned it in the Kidron Valley. Although the pagan shrines were not removed, Asa's heart remained completely faithful to the Lord throughout his life. He brought into the temple of the Lord the silver and gold and the various items that he and his father had dedicated. There was constant war between King Asa and Judah and King Baasha of Israel. King Baasha of Israel invaded Judah and fortified Ramah in order to prevent anyone from entering or leaving King Asa's territory in Judah. Asa, Asa responded by removing all the silver and gold that was left in the treasuries of the temple of the Lord and the royal palace. He sent it with some of his officials to Ben-Hadad, son of Trab Tabrimom, son of Hesion, the king of Aram, who was ruling in Damascus along with this message. Oh. <laughs> Sorry. Well, um, 
along with this message let there be a treaty between you and me like the one between your father and my father see i am sending you a gift of silver and gold break your treaty with king basha of israel so that he will leave me alone Ben Hadad agreed to King Asa's request and sent the commanders of his army to attack the town of Israel. Then conquer the town of Ichon, Dan, Abel Methmaka, Abel Beth Maaka, and all Kinnereth, and all the land of Naphtali. As soon as Baasha of Israel heard what was happening, he abandoned his project of fortifying Ramah and withdrew to Tirzah. The king Asa sent an order throughout Judah. 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 Requiring that everyone, without exception, help to carry away the building stones and timbers that Baasha had been using to fortify Ramah. Asa, Asa used these materials to fortify the town of Giba in Benjamin and the town of Mizpah. The rest of the events in Asa's reign, the extent of his power, everything he did, and the names of the cities he built are recorded in the book, in the book of the history of the kings of Judah. In his old age, his feet became deceased. When Asa died, he was buried with his ancestors in the city of David. Then Jehoshaphat, as a son, became the next king. Jehoshaphat. Nadab, oh, this is what I was missing. There we go. Nadab, son of Jeroboam, Nadab rules in Israel. Nadab rules in Israel. Nadab, son of Jeroboam, began to rule over Israel in in the second year of King Asa, Asa's reign in Judah. He, he reigned in Israel two years, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight and followed the example of his father, continuing the sins that Jeroboam had, he, had led Israel to commit. Then Baasha, son of Ahijah, so from the tribe of Ishachar, plotted against Nadab and assassinated him while he and the Israelite army were laying siege to the Philistine town of Gibbethon. Basha killed Nadab in the third year of King Asa's reign in Judah, and he became the next king of Israel. He immediately slaughtered all the descendants of King Jeroboam so that no one of the royal family was left, just as the Lord had promised con concerning Jeroboam, Jeroboam by the prophet Ahijah from Shiloh. Hilo. This was done because Jeroboam had provoked the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, by the sins he committed and the sins he had led Israel to commit. The rest of the event of Nadab's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of history of the kings of Israel. There was constant war between King Asa of Judah and King Baasha of Israel. Baasha, son of Ahijah, began to rule over all Israel in the third year of King Asa's reign 
in Jura, Jura. Baasha, Baasha reigned in Tirza 24 years, but he did not, but he did what was evil in the Lord's sight and followed the example of Jeroboam. Continuing the sins that Jeroboam had led Israel to commit. Footnote. Courage is needed to confront generations of corruption and dysfunctional behavior in any family. Asa, Asa showed courage when he confronted the sins of his forefathers by deciding to serve God. Asa challenged Asa's changes, including destroying Asa's change changes changes included destroying idols and deposing his grandmother from the from her position as queen mother in the early years of his reign. Asa, Asa leaves leaves us with a wonderful example of how to go out how to go about the rebuilding process. Those were footnotes. Those were footnotes. <laughs> Nadab continued to lead Israel into sin as his father Jeroboam had done before him. Leadership must be taken seriously because leaders are ultimately responsible for their followers as a result for their followers, period. As a result of the irresponsible leadership of Jeroboam, God destroyed him and his descendants. Leadership and responsibility go hand in hand. So do recovery and responsibility. If we desire to succeed in recovery, we need to take responsibility for our actions. Then we need to make the appropriate changes in our lives. Chapter 16. This message, there's no heading to chapter 16. This message from the Lord was delivered to King Baasha by the prophet Jehu, son of Hanani. I lifted you out of the dust to make you ruler of, of my people Israel. But you have followed the evil example of Jeroboam. You have provoked my anger by causing my people Israel to sin. So now I will destroy you and your family. Just as I destroyed the descendants of Jeroboam, son of Nebat. The members of Bacha's family who died in the city will be eaten by dogs, and those who died in the field will be eaten by vultures. The rest of the events in Bacha's reign and the extent of his power are recorded in the book of the history of the king of Israel. When Bacha died, he was buried in Tirzah. Then his son Elah became the next king. The message from the Lord against Bacha and his family came through the prophet Jehu, son of Hanani, it was delivered because Baasha had done what was evil in the Lord's sight, just as the family of Jeroboam had done, and also because Baasha had destroyed the family of Jeroboam. The Lord's anger was provoked by Baasha's sins.
good? Is it too close? The warmer on this side, I think this is gonna do the trick. I never usually do, I'm not a fire person, I mean, I love it, but I've never really built fires and stuff. So, this was built by my landlord yesterday when we did some yard waste burning. See all the ash around it, and it was still coals were still hot this morning, like he said. So I incorporated my morning routine to the fire pit and it's taking on. The Lord's anger was provoked was provoked by bad shots scenes. Okay, much better. Elah rules in Israel. Elah son of Basha began to rule over Israel in the 26th year of King Asa's reign in Judah. He reigned in the city of Tirsa for two years. Then Simri, who commanded half of the royal chariots, made plans to kill him. One day in Tirsa, Elah was getting drunk at the home of Arsa, the supervisor of the palace. Simri walked in and struck him down and killed him. This happened in the 27th year of King Asa's reign in Judah. Then Simri became the next king. Simri immediately killed the entire royal family of Baasha, leaving him not even a single male child. He even destroyed distant relatives and friends. So Simri destroyed the dynasty, the prophet Jehu. So destroyed the dynasty of Baasha, as the Lord had promised through the prophet Jehu. This happened because of all the sins Basha and his son Elah had committed, and because of the sins they led Israel to commit. They provoked the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, with their worthless idols. The rest of the events in Elah's reign and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. Simri rules in Israel. Simri began to rule over Israel. Simri. In the 27th year of King Asa's reign in Judah. But his reign in Tirzah lasted, lasted only seven days. The army of Israel was then attacking the Philistine town of Gibbethon. Gibbethon. When they heard that Simri had committed treason, 
and had assassinated the king that very day, they chose Omri, commander of the army, as the new king of Israel. So Omri led the entire army of Israel up from Giveton to attack Tirsa, Tirsa, Israel's capital. When Simri saw that the city had been taken, he went into the citadel of the palace and burned it down over himself and died in with the flames. When Simri saw that the city had been taken, he went into the citadel of the palace and burned it down over himself and died in the flames. For he too had done what was evil in the Lord's sight. He followed the example of Jeroboam in all the sins he had committed and led Israel to commit. The rest of the event of Simri's reign and his conspiracy are recorded in the book of the history of, king, of kings of Israel. Omri rules in Israel. But now the people of Israel was split into two factions. Half the people tried to take Tibni, son of Gina, tried to make Tibni, son of Gina, their king, while the other half was supported, half supported Omri. But Omri's supporter defeated the supporters of Tibni. So Tibni was killed, and Omri became the next king. Omri began to rule over Israel in the 31st year of King Asa's reign in Judah. He reigned 12 years in all, six of them in Tirsa, then Omri but, but the hill, now known as Samaria, from its owner Shemer for 150 pounds of silver. He built that city on it and called the, the city Samaria in honor of Shemer. But Omri did what was evil in the Lord's sight, even more than any of the kings before him. He followed the example of Jeroboam, son of ne Nebat, in all the sins he had committed, and led Israel to commit, to commit, and led Israel to commit. The people provoked the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, with the worthless idols. The rest of the events in Omri's reign, the extent of his power and everything he did are recorded in the book of the history of the kings of Israel. When Omri died, he was buried in Samaria. Then his son Ahab became the next king. Ahab rules in Israel. Ahab, son of Omri, began to rule over Israel in the 38th years of King Asa's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 22 years. But Ahab, son of Omri, did what was evil in the Lord's sight, even more than any one of the kings before him. And as though it were not enough to follow the sinful example of Jeroboam, he married Jezebel, the daughter of King Ethbaal of the Sidonians, and he began to bow down in worship of Baal. First, Ahab built a temple and an altar for Baal in Samaria. Then he set up an Asherah, Achera, and Achera Paul. He did more to provoke the anger of the Lord than God, the God of Israel than any of the other kings of Israel before him. It was during his reign that Hiel, 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 a man from Bethel, rebuilt Jericho. When he laid I got burned a little bit. That's okay. I'm not backing up. Okay. It was during his running hill that a man from Bethel rebuilt Jericho. When he laid its foundation, it cost him the life of his oldest son, Abiram. And when he completed it, and set up his gates, it cost him the life of his youngest son, Segub. This all happened according to the message from the Lord concerning Jericho spoken by Joshua, 
son of Nun. Nun. Son of Nun. Okay, footnotes. Alcohol and drugs abuse is often driven by the desire to escape the realities we don't want to face. Every year, people die, families are torn apart, careers are ruined, and lives are shattered by unhealthy dependencies. God uses Elah to demonstrate the dangers of alcoholism, probably too intoxicated, probably too intoxicated to defend himself, Elah was killed easily by Simri. Alcohol affects our judgment and our reflexes. How many lives could be saved if we would all learn from Elah's mistake? Simri had the shortest reign, seven days, of all of the kings of Israel. Omri led the army of Israel against Simri at Tirzah. Seeing that, he, that his end was near, Simri committed suicide. Like those before him, Simri was an evil king, but even at the end, he had time to call upon God to save him. But rather than submit to Almighty God or face the judgment of his people, Simri took his own life. When it looks like there is no way out of our problems, we need not take such a drastic measure. We should always start by turning for God, to God for help. A descending spiral well illustrates how we tend to fall progressively deeper into trouble unless we take steps to turn things around. God uses the story of the kings of Israel to illuminate the principles, this principle to us. Ahab continued the downward spiral. He was more weakened than any other king before him. I have been his forefathers serve as a reminder that problems left resolved will continue and even worsen until confronted and resolved. Chapter 17 Elijah fed by ravens. Hmm. Now Elijah, who was from Tishbe in Gilead, talking Ahab, as surely as the Lord the God of Israel lives, the God I serve, there will be no dew or rain during the next few years until I give the word. Then the Lord said to Elijah, go to the east and high by Kerith Brooks, by Kerith Brook, near where it enters the Jordan River. Drink from the brook and eat what the ravens bring you, for I have commanded them to bring you food. So Elijah did as the Lord told him encamped beside Kerith Brook, east of the Jordan. The ravens brought him bread, meat, bread and meat each morning and evening, and he drank from the brook. But after a while, the brook died, dried up, so there was no rainfall anywhere in the land. The widow was Sarepath. Sarepath. The widow, the widow was Sarepath. Then the Lord said to Elijah, Go and live in the village of Sarepath near the city of Sidon. I have instructed a widow there to feed you. So he went to Sarepath. As he arrived at the gates of the village, he saw a widow gathering sticks and he asked her, Would you please bring me a little water in a cup? As she was doing as she was going to get it, he called to her, 
bring me a bite of bread too. But he said, I swear by the Lord your God that I won't, I don't have a single piece of bread in the house and I have only a handful of flour left in the jar and a little cooking oil in the bottom of the jug. I was just gathering a few sticks to cook this last meal and then my son and I will die. But Elijah said to her, don't be afraid, go ahead and do just what you've said, but make a little bread for me first, then use what's left to prepare a meal for yourself and your son. For this is what the Lord, the God of Israel says, there will always be flour and olive oil left in your containers until the time when the Lord sends rains and the crops grow again. So she did as Elijah said, and she and Elijah and her family continued to eat for many days. There was always enough flour and olive left in the containers, just as the Lord had promised through Elijah. Some time later, the woman's son became sick. He grew worse and worse, worse and worse, and finally he died. Then she said to Elijah, Oh man of God, what have you done to me? Have you come here to point out my sins and kill my son? But Elijah replied, give me your son. And he took the child's body from her arms, carried him up the stairs to the room where he was staying, and laid the body on his bed. Then Elijah cried out to the Lord, oh Lord, my God, why, why have you brought tragedy to this widow who has opened her home to me, causing her son to die? And he stretched himself out over the child three times and carried out the Lord and cried out to the Lord. Oh Lord my God, please let this child life return to him. The Lord heard Elijah's prayer in the life of the child's return, the child returned, and he revived. Then Elijah brought him down from the upper room and gave him to his mother. Look, he said, your son is alive. Then the woman told Elijah, Now I know for sure that you are a man of God. And that the Lord truly speaks to you. I'm gonna leave it for now. I'm gonna leave it at that for now because I think somebody is coming here to talk to me. No, nobody is. Never mind. We're going to continue. Here we go. <coughs> Footnote. The widow of Sef Sa the widow of Sarephath, Sarephath, the widow of Sarephath demonstrated the delivering power of faith. She and her son faced starvation, but still she shared the last of her food with Elijah. She believed that God would come through. So she gave up her last resource for survival. The result was her de deliverance. God provided for her need. When are we powerless at the end of our rope? All we need to do is call out to God. He will take care of us and deliver us from our dependencies if we're willing to trust him. Mm -hmm. When the widow lost her son, her first impulse was to blame it on her own sin. God showed her that this was not the case by bringing her son back to life. Personal tragedy is not always a result of something we have done. We must be careful not to blame ourselves without just cause, and we should never blame God. Instead, we should see what we can learn from the situation. Chapter 18. The Countess of Mount Carmel. Later on, in the third year of the drought, the Lord said to Elijah, go and present yourself to King Ahab. Tell him that I will soon send rain. So Elijah went to appear before Arab. Meanwhile, the famine had become very severe in Samaria. So Ahab summoned 
Obadiah, who was in charge of the place. Obadiah was a devoted follower of the Lord. Once, when Jezebel had tried to kill all the Lord's prophets, Obadiah had hidden a hundred of them in two caves. He put 50 prophets in each cave and supplied them with food and water. Ahab said to Obadiah, We must check every spring and valley in the land to see if we can find enough grass to save at least some of the horses and mules. So they divided the land between them. Ahab went one way by himself and Obadiah went the other way by himself, the other way by himself. them okay and Obadiah went the other way by himself as Obadiah was walking along the su he suddenly saw Elijah coming toward him Obadiah recognized him at once and bowed low to the ground before him is it really you my lord Elijah, he asked. Yes, it is Elijah, replied. Now go and tell your master Elijah is here. Oh, sir, Obadiah protested. What harm have I done to you? That you are sending me to my death at the hands of Ahab. For I swear by the Lord your God that the king had searched every nation and kingdom on earth from end to end to find you. And each time he has told Elijah isn't here. King Ahab forced the king of that nation to swear to the truth of his claim. And now you say, go and tell your master Elijah is here. But as soon as I leave you, the spirit of the Lord will carry you away to who knows where. When I have comes and cannot find you, he will kill me. Yet I have been a true servant of the Lord all my life. Has no one told you, my Lord, about the time when Jezebel was trying to kill the Lord's prophets? I hid 100 of them in two caves and supplied them with food and water. And now you say, go and tell your master Eli Elijah is here? Sir, if I do that, I have will suddenly kill me. But Elijah said, I swear by the Lord Almighty, in whose presence I stand, that I will present myself to Ahab this very day. So Obadiah went to tell Ahab the, 
that Elijah had come and I have went out to meet Elijah. When I have saw him, he explained, so it is really you, you troublemaker of Israel. You troublemaker of Israel? I have made no trouble for Israel, Elijah replied. You and your family are the troublemakers, for you have refused to obey the commands of the Lord and have worshipped the images of Baal instead. Now summon all Israel to join me at Mount Carmel, along with 450 prophets of Baal and the 400 prophets of Ash Achera, 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 who are supported by Jezebel. I see it, Spooky! She's got a... <laughs> She's got a mouse. Is that a mouse? Is that a mouse? Good girl, Spooky! Good girl, Spooky! <laughs> um... Squirrel! Baal and the 400 pro prophets of Asherah, Akherah who are supported by Jezebel. So I have summoned all the people of Israel and the prophets to Mount Carmel. Then Elijah stood in front of them and said, how much longer will you waver, hobbling between two opinions? If the Lord is God, follow him. But if Baal is God, then follow him. But the people were completely silent. Then Elijah said to them, I am the only prophet of the Lord who is left. But Baal has 450 prophets. Now bring two bulls. The prophets of Baal may choose whichever one they wish and cut it into pieces and lay it on the wood of their altar, but without. But not set fire on it. Then call on the name of your God, and I will call on the name of the Lord. The God who answers by setting fire to the wood is a true God, and all the people agree. Then Elijah said to the prophets, I wonder if this is getting too hot. <laughs> so they prepare the so they prepared one of the bulls and placed it on the altar. Then they called on the name of Baal from morning until noontime, shouting, Oh Baal, answer us. But there was no reply of any kind. But then, then they danced, hobbling around the altar they had made. About noontime, Elijah began mocking them. You have to shout louder, he scoffed. For sure he is a god. Perhaps he is daydreaming or is revealing relieving himself. Or maybe he is away he he's away on a trip or is asleep and needs to be awakened. Yeah, Pookie! Scroll again. So they shouted louder and following their normal costume, they cut themselves with knives and swords until the blood gushed out. They raved all afternoon until the time of the evening sacrifice, but still there was no sound, no reply, no response. Then Elijah called to the people, come over here. They all crowded around him and he repaired the altar of the Lord 
that had been torn down. He took 12 stones, one to represent each of the tribes of Israel, and he used the stones to rebuild the altar in the name of the Lord. Then he dug a trench around the altar large enough to hold about three gallons. He piled wood on the altar. Cut the bull into pieces and laid the pieces on the wood. Then he said, fill four large jars with what large la jars with water and pour the water over the offering and the wood. After he had done this, he said, do the same thing again. And when they are finished, he said, now do it a third time. So they did as he, as he said, and the water ran around the altar and even filled the trench. At the usual time of offering the evening sacrifice, Elijah the prophet walked out of the altar and prayed, O Lord, God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, Prove today that you are son, that you are God in Israel, and that I am your servant. Prove that I have done all this at your command. Oh Lord, answer me. Answer me so these people will know that you, oh Lord, are God, and that you have brought them back yourself. And that you have brought them back yourself. Immediately the fire of the Lord flashed down the heaven and burned up the young bull, the wood, the stones, and, and the dust. It even leaked up all the water in the trench. And when all the people saw it, and when all the people saw it, they fell face down on the ground and cried out, The Lord, He is God. Yes, the Lord, He is God. Then Elijah commanded, Seize all the prophets of Baal. Don't let a single one escape. So the people seized them all, and Elijah took them down to the Kishon Valley. And killed them there. them there <sighs> Elijah prays for rain then Elijah said to Ahab go get something to drink to eat and drink for I hear a mighty rainstorm coming so Habab went to eat and drink but Elijah climbed to the top of Mount Carmel and bowed low to the ground and prayed with his face between his knees. Then he said to his servant, Go and look out, outward, out toward the sea. The servant went and looked, then returned to Elijah and said, I didn't see anything. Seven times Elijah told him to go and look. Finally, the seventh time, his servant told him, I saw a little cloud about the size of a man's hand rising from the sea. Then Elijah shouted, hurry to Ahab and tell him, climb into your chariot and go back home. If you don't hurry, the rain will stop you. And soon the sky was black with clouds. A heavy wind brought a terrific rainstorm and Ahab left quickly for Jezreel. Then the Lord gave special strength to Elijah. He tucked his cloak into his belt and ran ahead of Ahab's chariot all the way to the entrance of Jezreel. Okay, two things. 
I'm going to read a recovery principle devotional and a profile. And then let's do the footnotes first. Footnote. It's only one. The odds are against us. It's a common phrase in our society. Few enjoy the underdog, the one that odds are against. The, undergore, the underdog here is Elijah, who was greatly outnumbered by the prophets of Baal. Elijah trusted God to be with him. To be with him in what had what has become one of the greatest spiritual victories of all time. When God is on our side, we are always a majority. No dependency or problem will ever be able to stop our progress. If God is for us, who can be against us? All right. Profile. Ahab and Jezebel. Oddly enough, Bad roles models, bad roles, bad role models can be as valuable to us as good ones. Their behavior provides clear guidance on how not to act. The consequences they suffer also provide a warning for any who might imit for any who might imitate them. We can often observe the actions of dysfunctional people and plot a healthy curse by doing exactly the opposite. I have been Jezebel were bad role models. I have was an exceedingly evil and oppressive king and his wife Jezebel taught him things about evil that he would never have dreamed of alone. If not, it is not as if I have had Jezebel and Jezebel had no opportunity to understand and pursue recovery. Again and again, the prophet Elijah confronted them about their wicked dealings. Again and again, they rebuked his efforts to start them on the road to recovery. Finally, Elijah's confrontation made a difference in Ahab's life. After Jezebel's courageous scheme, allowed I have to process the vineyard of Naboth to possess. After Jezebel's original scheme allowed I have to possess the vineyard of Naboth, Elijah predicted I have's violent death. At that point I have greatly, greatly humbled himself and went about in deep mourning. He seemed to have hit bottom and began to have to move toward recovery. There is, however, no record of further progress before Ahab's death in battle. Jezebel, on the other hand, never made even the slightest move toward God in, in his way, ways. Whenever she was defeated by Elijah, she merely re redoubled her efforts to maintain her idolatry and get her own way. No wonder her name has become a byword for evil among God's people. Like most people involved in evil, I have been Jezebel surrounding themselves with people of like mind. They avoided and punished people who held them accountable. When they are involved in destructive behavior, we also prefer the confronting darkness of sin and sinful friends. Recovery requires that we break with the past and our destructive, destructive relationships. We should listen to the people who love us and who love God enough to hold us accountable for our actions. Recovery Principle Devotional Perfectionism Read 1 Kings chapter 19 verses 1 through 21 People who are perfectionists tend to see the world in black and white 
we often we often feel like we're superhuman, able to take on anything until we discover a flaw. Then we come crashing down and consider ourselves completely worthless. This is all or nothing. This all or nothing way of thinking can be very dangerous to the recovery process. The prophet Elijah is one of the great heroes of the Bible. If anyone had reason to feel superhuman, it was he. His prayer brought a lengthy drought upon Israel. And later brought fire down from heaven, humiliating Queen Jezebel and her priests of Baal. But even Elijah could have could have a bad day. Let's consider this reaction after being threatened by Jezebel. I have had enough, Lord. I have I have had enough, Lord, he said. Take my life. I have zealously served the Lord God Almighty. But the people of Israel have broken their covenant with you, turned down your altars, and killed every one of your prophets. I am the only one left. And now they are trying to kill me too. First Kings. Then God told him. The God told him that there were 7,000 others in Israel who have never bowed down to Baal or kissed him. Like Elijah, if we're perfectionists, we may think that we are above everyone else we work very hard to please God and know the people but we can grow dangerously discouraged if things don't seem to work this tendency is something for us to watch for while working on step four this tendency is something to watch for while working on step four if we don't allow ourselves to be less than perfect we may find that we are at great risk when life reminds us that we are only human after all. And I'm going to leave it at, now, at that for now. Thank you guys for tuning in. I hope you enjoy the fire. Hopefully I come back again and there's a fire. Or the fire is still burning or there's still coals in there. So we can keep doing this. All right, thank you. See you guys later.